Morning everybody. Welcome back to Expedition Homestead, the channel where we build your passion for growing. We're just here in the backyard. We got a couple of great things to do today. It is the 4th of July weekend. Got a million other things to do, but of course here I am making a video because I I'm obsessed with gardening and apparently I'm obsessed with making videos too. Let's take a second here and admire this willow tree. This bad boy was propagated only a single year ago. That's right, this is the biggest willow tree cutting I ever took up until now. I actually have some logs that I'm trying to propagate right now. I'll show you that a little bit later in the video. Whether or not I'll be successful, only time will tell. But I think they'll grow because willow trees are incredible. They just don't stop growing. But if you look at this willow tree here, it's uh, quite tall. All that growth, all of it. I'll be pruning this up when winter comes because I want to keep this small. I want it to be about 12 feet tall in total. And we'll be kind of bonsaiing it so we're pruning off all of the, all the strangly long weak growth and I want to develop some nice really strong leaders in this willow tree because everybody needs a leader in their life am I right and um, speaking of leaders and pruning we've got some apple trees that we have to prune and right now is a perfect time to take care of our summer pruning for our apples so let's go over to a couple different apple trees and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about this is the most beautiful apple tree I have on this property right now. I'm growing apple trees in a couple of different ways. <clears throat> this one is going to have a central leader and it is going to be, I'm going to be platforming it. So this winter I will be chopping off the center leader right here and creating a platform right here, keeping this, this apple tree nice and short. But what we just did was our summer pruning. So when there's a growth point, basically where you see the growth of last year, you wanna go about three to five leaf sets out from that point, give it a snip in an angular direction. I'll show you how to do that on our apple tree out front. But this one has been pruned except for these bottom branches right here. These bottom branches, I do want to keep nice and tight against the tree. I would realistically, this winter, I'm probably going to cut them out to right here. But for right now, what I'm going to do, so yeah, so right here is the new growth where we have basically a grouping of leaves. And then you can see the new growth from this point on. What we want to do is find a leaf that's growing downward, cut in an angle, just like that, and that's gonna be our summer pruning. Right here again, we can see this tight grouping of leaves right here. We're gonna go off a few leaf sets and then chop it off. Do the same thing right here. And that branch is all ready. Typically, you'll get your fruit set right where that old growth is, where you have that main bunch of leaves. And then by doing a summer pruning, sometimes you can flush out a flower set, um, you know, two or three of them after that node as well. So right here we had a couple of flowers, flower right there. Um, we've got them developing on the tree. This is a young one yet, so we'll see how it does but I love the growth pattern that this one is in. We can see that open vase. And if I wanted to, I could cut out that center right there, but I'm gonna develop one more platform for this tree. And so we're, we're growing our lateral growth right there, and then we'll have more lateral growth right here and cut off that main leader. Here we're out front and you can see where the old growth is right here. We've got this dense portion of leaves. We're gonna do the same thing. Cut right there. Pull down this branch. 
part right there. Now just really quickly, I'm going to go through this entire thing. Now, this is my very soft addition of pruning. I can do, and I will do, a much harder pruning on this thing when winter comes. I think some of you might be shocked what we will do with this tree. Some of the branches I'm going to cut right off because they're growing into each other. Don't be afraid to do this. You own this tree. It is, it is your tree to prune and to shape. So you can do whatever you want with it. Don't be afraid. Just do it. Get out there and cut that tree up. Ooh, look at that. We got some fruit right here. Some flowers that turned into apples. Got some more up over here. Pretty cool. Can we not cut the ones off that have apples? Nope, I won't. This one is really starting to grow into a main leader, which I don't want. Not at this point, at least. Yeah, not main leader. Cut that completely off. Keeping this fruit tree nice and small. See, this is the old, see that ring right there? You wanna go right here. Good job. I'm also going to cut off any growth that is going upwards, basically right at the collar. I don't want that growth at all. What we're trying to create with this tree is lateral outward growth. This one has that, that vase shape. And it has been growing really well, even though we just planted it here last year, so it wasn't really my choice on how to grow it, but it's been growing well. I do need to cut out still any branches that are growing together. It's just important that we control where the growth is going from this point on. If you let this apple tree grow however it wants to, it will just take over your life. It'll take over your yard. Pretty soon it's going to take over your family and everything else that comes along with it. Uh-oh. The convicts have escaped. All right, we just about got every single one of these. Now this is an example, another one, of a very good growing apple tree, but this one over here, this one is not so great. Now some varieties you have just might want to naturally grow in more of an upright position, and that's totally what this tree is doing. So I think I might have to wait for a lot of this uh, to be done in the winter. I'm going to do a really heavy cutback on this. But some of these branches that I see right now are not growing in a good condition whatsoever. I'm just going to chop off right now. So this one was growing basically straight up right. These ones down lower right here, I will probably train to open up. And since I do have another upright growing apple tree here, it's going to be very hard to make an open vase shape. So what I will do is cut off. I don't really like any of that growth here. I really don't. I'm just going to chop this right now. Chop that. I ain't afraid, Mr. Tree. I'm gonna chop this off too. Chop. I'm gonna chop this off. All that stuff, I ain't afraid. Don't let the apple trees run you. You run the apple tree. You own these apple trees. All right. And this one, 
All this weird upright growth. I don't want it at all. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Except for this. Cut that off. Cut this off. Keep on finding more stuff that I want to do to it. Cut this off. Cut this off. It's growing inwards. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to have to train these and get them to open up a little bit for me. And that's okay. We can string those down. We can string them down. Let me get rid of the summer growth now. The point of summer pruning is to control the vigor of the tree, to control how fast it's growing right now, um, and to develop some strength in the portions that you are keeping growing. Now the point of winter pruning is the shaping of the tree. Even though we just did some shaping right now, I'm okay with that because again, we own this tree. This is our tree. There we got our third tree for the day that is pruned and ready. Okay, all set. By continuing to prune the inward growth and encouraging this tree to branch out, I think we can go against its natural growth habit. And when doing that, the tree is naturally going to flower more. It's going to give you more fruit. It's not going to just try and go crazy up to the skies like it really wants to. So that is why we try and get the lateral growth going. And a lot of people, some people will say, can't trim that center leader. You can't top that tree. You can't do this. It's not right. Your tree's going to die. What are you thinking? Well, this tree's going to be just fine. It is going to be just fine. I'm not afraid of that at all. It'll be good. Another thing you definitely don't want to do is have a raised garden bed in your front yard because that's weird. You should be growing grass in that front yard only. You shouldn't be teaching people how to grow in their front yard. What is wrong with you? Weirdo? Uh-oh. Got some cucumbers that are growing out of control. I'm trying to get these tendrils to wrap around here. Basically what happens with the tendril is when the plant senses touch, what the uh, cell division multiplies by about exactly two times on the side that's touching whatever it might be. Can be a little bit difficult to get you on there, little buddy. He tries though, he does try very much. So what I will do is take these clips that I've got the vegetable clips are extremely handy. I mean, one of the greatest inventions of all time. As long as you keep on using them over and over again and they don't just end up in the trash because they are plastic, so that's not good for anybody. But they're very helpful for keeping my tomatoes up on this trellis. The reason why we grow uh, our cucumbers, I'm sorry. The reason why we grow our cucumbers on trellises is because they're so much easier to get all the cucumbers as soon as they ripen. Because you can see them all. You can see every one. Like this one right here. Perfect candidate. There is a good cucumber. Ready to munch on. Mm. It doesn't get much better than a cucumber right out of the garden. Larry boy, what happened? When I'm down in the garden, I come across things like lamb's quarters that's growing. Very edible, very nutritious. We've got some a broccoli volunteer. I'll pick that stuff up as I go through. Not the thistle, Canada thistle, that is the worst. That will hurt you. Throw that off to the side. But this stuff here, I'll grab this and throw it to the chickens every time I'm out in the garden. 
No, not all of it, of course. What do you think? I'm a heathen. Some of those weeds have to go into our compost bin. Throw my cucumber in my pocket for later. Oh, I got tears in my pocket. Got cukes in my pocket. Tighten that up. All right. Clip that on there. We've got a second cucumber. Two cucumbers in one bucket? Are you kidding me? Pop that on. And we'll get these to grow along here. I'm trying to turn it this way, but it uh, doesn't want to do that. Maybe I'll put a second one over here just to get it to grow in the direction I want it to. There. That's good. Just like that. That way it can grow like the one over here. This one is grabbing on and holding on for dear life. It knows where it wants to go. It knows where I want it to go. In case you're wondering, we've got, I don't know, I think we have like eight, eight-ish. In case you're wondering, I think we've got like eight cucumber plants right there. And then we have the four cucumber plants that we're growing back along this fence. It is a perfect place to grow them. They're going to grow right up there real fast. We've already gotten about one or two cucumbers off of each plant including the ones down here. I usually just munch on them as I'm gardening or as the kids are out here. I taught my son how to pick them off the right way so he doesn't rip the plant apart, just like he does with the peas. Um, taught him how to do that, so occasionally he'll be out here and he will eat them as well. I think this is, oh yeah, this is an apple tree. This one, yeah, we can get this to grow really well. We're going to do a winter pruning on this right here. I'm going to chop this whole thing off. Maybe I'll go a little higher. I won't confuse myself. Hmm. I have to decide on what to do with that one, but this one's got to get pruned up eventually too. First, I should probably look back in my videos and figure out if it is an apple tree or not. Let's look at these sunflowers. I have a couple of different sunflowers growing this year, but these ones are our Pikes Peak sunflower. They're supposed to grow even taller than our mammoth sunflowers, right buddy? So they're about, I don't know, I would say three, three and a half feet. At this point, some of them even taller. They're growing very well. I will say if you want to grow big sunflowers, don't neglect to fertilize them, get them lots of compost, inoculating mycorrhizal fungi in the soil, getting some good bacteria in there, possibly sending out your kids to pee on them every once in a while. That does good as well. And if I see leaves turning brown and dying off, I'll also snip those off to give them a helping hand. Besides that, you don't need really great soil to grow sunflowers. That's kind of my point of growing them over here is I'm, I'm amending the soil, I'm building up the soil in this part of the yard because this was like a big drainage ditch essentially, just fills up with water. So we're building soil in this place. We're pulling things up. We're breaking out the clay. Sunflowers are great for doing that. They do a really good job. Nice and strong roots, very deep roots as well. Last year we grew almost 14 foot tall sunflowers. They were huge. It was like a jungle back here. I loved it. So very excited for them again this year. Hopefully these Pikes Peak sunflowers do a good job. If you watch the videos where I laid out this entire area with wood chips, I did say some weeds would come through because weeds are persistent. 
but I'll show you exactly what I do. Either if there's just a few of them, I'll pick them out by hand. Otherwise, I just take my stirrup hoe. Daddy, mommy. Sorry about that, my wife called. Gotta to tend to the wife as well, just like the garden. Take the stirrup hoe, even though it's not ideally made for wood chips. I could probably do this with a rake too. But I will just go through and cut all of these off, spread the wood chips back. So we've got that green matter breaking down. And we're pinching off this growth here. And eventually it's just gonna say that it's had enough. That I win. I win over nature. I beat these weeds out once and for all here in the garden. Very easy process. Eventually over time you'll get less and less weeds. I did just throw this down here a couple of weeks ago, so this is the most that we'll probably get. But as I get the undergrowth under control, kill all that stuff off, the only weeds that we'll have popping up are gonna be the seed weeds, which shouldn't be very many at that point. Oh, gotta get them. Gotta get them all. Got it. Wow. A baseball and tennis ball too. Those aren't really good for your garden. The best things, the best thing about gardening is experimenting and growing the way that you want to and figuring out what works on your own. Because I find that it's a lot less stressful that way and it kind of creates your own little culture around the garden that you create in your backyard. Yeah, we should take different tips and tricks like all the ones that I teach you about and implement them in our garden. But if it's to the point where we're looking up how to do each and every last thing, I think that just kind of takes away from the fun of gardening and learning because if you don't get a couple of harvests, that's okay. If a couple of plants die because you were just a savage to your garden, at least you learned something in the meantime. This bed right here was a bed that we got an incredible harvest of radishes and beets out of. And I kept on planting those up until the point where the radishes flowered. And now the beets are just about to where they're starting to not put on much root growth and they are starting to get a little bit woody because of how hot it is. These ones right here we did not thin out whatsoever just to see what would happen. Usually that is a very bad idea for a root crop, especially so late in the season. Um, this, this is an example of a beet that was out by itself. And here we've got a beet that was really, really close to a bunch of other ones. And one right here, very, very close to a bunch of other ones. One right here. Oh, that one's not too hot at all. That one's a lot smaller. Um, let's see, I'm trying to get the ones that are mostly ready. Here's a couple that are really close together that do not produce whatsoever. But we kept life in this soil, and so at least we maintain that. And there are some dominant ones in here, not that one. But uh, not thinning out your beets is probably not the best idea, especially so late in the season. I think I'm going to let a lot of these continue to grow just to see how far into July we can grow them without them getting too nasty. Seeing how far we can extend our harvest here because I can't simply go online and look up how late into July can I grow beets in southeastern Wisconsin. I'm not going to find the answer. So I've got to find that answer myself and that's what we're doing 
right here. Uh, I promised you earlier we would check out some willow tree cuttings, the largest willows that I've ever grown right here. I don't know how they'll do. Check this out, it's gonna be crazy. These are the largest willow cuttings I've ever tried to grow. And what's really incredible is that they're actually growing. Um, oh my goodness, I have roots. What just happened? What did I just do? Ooh, there's lots of icky, weird stuff in here too. Some multicellular organisms and worms and... Ugh. You gotta check this out. They're like aquatic slugs. I'm not sure what that is, but it's alive. Whatever it is, that that's those are alive. Ew. But what's really incredible is this. You see that? We've got roots. This log is rooting. We not only have roots, but we have new growth. This thing seems to be growing here in this water. This one too. The one that didn't have a branch actively growing on it is looking a little bit rough, but the other two that did have some sets of leaves are growing. Uh, what else is growing is mosquitoes in there, so I'm going to take this. It's essentially swamp juice at this point. I'm going to feed whatever this is to my tomatoes. The mosquito larva in there should break down pretty quickly. And then there's been kind of like rotting willow tree bark. There's this willow water essentially will be very good for the roots of the tomatoes as well. Hopefully there's some high levels of bacteria in there. I ain't afraid. Wow, and look at this one too. It's rooting. It's rooting right there and right there. Oh, I can't believe it. This is gonna be successful. You, you gotta check out these things though. What the heck? What on God's green earth is this? Those are the strangest things I've ever seen. Dragonfly larva or... I don't know. I better stay away from those though. Probably, probably shouldn't touch those too much. Ugh, those I'm afraid of. Don't want these out of water for too long. Oh, I just killed it. I just killed it. All of my hard work is done for. I am actually kind of amazed that we're getting roots on these so quickly. I think it's been about a week and a half, give or take. Uh, yeah, a week and a half, almost two weeks. And we've got roots. They're giant root stocks. We've now got, we've now got really like this giant root stock available that is going to be pushing out a ton of energy to these willows as they grow. So this might be the world's fastest way to grow a willow tree. You've seen it right here on this channel. 
Only Ripley can show you this stuff. And this is all to say that you shouldn't be afraid to grow a garden. You shouldn't be afraid to do something out of the norm because, you know, water comes out, you gonna help? Thank you. You shouldn't be afraid to do something out of the norm because you might just get a result that is spectacularly unexpected. Thank you so much for watching today's episode and we'll see you in the next one.